everyone, if you're, if you're listening in. Uh, my name's Sam Bowden, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to this fascinating little interview I'm going to do with Terry Tran. I'll introduce you to Terry in a moment, but before I do, I just want to tell you why I'm doing this particular interview. Um, you know, my, if you like, call it your purpose in life is really to uh, help facilitate myself and others in creating an amazing life. And, you know, I've been working with business owners for, you know, 10 years and, and I really sort of share there's three areas of uh, science, if you like, that we learn. Number one is you learn, uh, you know, vet science or physio science or med science or engineering or whatever the kind of technical skills you learn. That's the first science you learn. The second, second science that you learn on the way through, of course, is the uh, what I call business science. And that's how to make some money out of your technical skills you learnt as when you were uh, from your degree or your, your you know, apprenticeship or whatever it is. So that's business science. The third science is wealth science. And that's how do you take the profit from that business and turn that into passive income? And in my journey sort of have going, this has sort of been my journey through those three processes. And what I've found is the, the business science thing, very successful in showing people how to create significant amounts of profit from their business. But the third area of wealth science, if, if I'm to be really transparent and I love integrity and honesty, you know, I've had an interesting journey and um, I've tried a lot of stuff in investing in what I call wealth science in my learning process. And some wins, uh, a lot more losses than wins across a wide range of areas. And I'm talking from investing into uh, cattle, buying and selling cattle. I'm talking about real estate. I'm talking about developments. I'm talking about shares. Uh, so I guess I've tried in a, a fair myriad of different styles of investing. And here's what I found was the challenge was that uh, I didn't do very well. And I ended up, I got to this point where I went, you know what, I know how to make money from a business, but I really don't know that third thing, wealth science. And I've never really found what I would call a system or a process that can be shared with someone else and taught to someone else that is routine. If you follow the rules, it's kind of predictable, it's routine and it's safe. Other than that, I think that many of us, what we do, make some money and then it's like hot potato, hot potato, what do I do? Head off in the wealth, try and create some wealth from it. And really, it's punting. So my, I've been with this process for a year now, uh, nearly exactly a year. Um, started trading, I think, or sort of investing in um, uh, a, a year ago. Well, I started the journey about 18 months ago. I actually went live around about a year ago. And, you know, have developed in that time frame, learned an incredible lot. But the really exciting thing is just applying this process in a very safe and small way, you know, a 10% return. And starting from scratch, I think that's phenomenal. So the reason that I wanted to do this interview is because I see this as now, this is the piece around wealth science or a piece that I've been looking for. And honestly, I feel it's just my duty to share it with you, listening in. So uh, I want to introduce you to Terry, who's the uh, good looking bloke sitting there. Um, and I met Terry, the story is I had just lost a considerable sum of money in some shares that I'd bought. And it was a good solid six-figure sum of money that I lost. And it finally, often we uh, don't take action until pain's great enough to force us to do so. And I finally got sick and tired of this. And then I was talking to a friend of mine. He said, I'm working with this guy, Terry Tran. Teach you how to invest safely and, and things like that. And I was like, really? I mean, there's a million guys out there doing this whole share circuit. And, you know, so I, I spoke to Terry. Then I spoke to a number of Terry's clients. And I got the same, exactly the same feedback I had from my friend who was investing with Terry, Terry's clients as well as what Terry did. So I went on this journey and I've got to say, I've been really stoked with the, the outcome and super excited about knowing I can do this for the next 20, 30 years. I mean, the financial future is extraordinary. So Terry, thanks mate for giving up your time. Appreciate it. And why don't you just share with the audience a little bit about your journey and how you got to be where you are now. Sure. Thanks, Sam, for having me. Um, it's actually a, a privilege uh, to be on, I guess, to be part of your journey, first of all, but also being able to share um, the same message uh, that I, I guess I, I was in that search years ago as well, because personally myself, I came from a corporate background, but if I go back in time exactly 40 years ago uh, this year, um, I literally was um, uh, one, what would you call uh, one of those boat people uh, back in the, the, the late 70s where my parents and I, we escaped from communism in Vietnam. Um, and 
the communists took everything. So my, uh, my dad, we, our family as a family were starving. So therefore we had to find a way to swap some gold nuggets into uh, a couple of um, basically uh, the, the, the boat ride or the boat tickets to, to find another home. And we had no idea whether we'll make it to Australia or not, but we did go on, on board this boat uh, with 300 plus others. Unfortunately though, uh, we were lost out at sea for about three days. Had no food, just the water. And uh, in fact, the, because of the amount of people, uh, the boat was actually slowly sinking as well. So uh, I'm actually very fortunate that a cargo ship, which somehow spotted us and saved us because without that cargo ship, I wouldn't be here today. So that's one thing that I, I really do think, you know, I'm extremely grateful for. And even though that in and next to that, what ended up happening was that cargo ship then took us to a nearby refugee camp off the coast of Malaysia. And that's, that's where we were processed. Not unlike the, the people who are these days processed in like say the Christmas Island that we hear about on, on news. Uh, however, these days, a little bit different because at least it's proper homes. Back then, it was nothing but tents as a, as a shelter. So that was it. And unfortunately, though, my father did pass away because one night a storm hit and that a tree next to our tent came down on our, on our tent and uh, crushed him while I was sleeping next to my mum. And he, he barely missed me for some reason. So uh, my mum at the age of 22, she was a, became a widow and had to look after a two-year-old, uh, which was me. So I saw firsthand... Uh, the suffering that my mother went through as well as even for, as a young child, but then seeing her when we uh, Australia put up their hands and we were lucky enough to be accepted to this beautiful country. I saw my mother struggle financially, uh, the having to, you know, work in a metals factory, trying to learn English and then having to wash dishes at night and a second job. So I saw that freedom, which I never had as a, as a child and my mother never had. It was something that was that I wanted uh, very, very badly. Mm -hmm. So typical Asian kid, I'd listen to my mum. Uh, went, studied hard, went to university, got my degree in, in business, finance and, and accounting uh, and uh, got, a, got a corporate job. So life was good. It seemed good. However, about five years later, I, I was picked up by the NAB um, and that's when they really put me into one of those accelerated programs where I progressed very, very fast within the bank. And they, their dream for me was to become a regional and then state manager. But then five years in though, uh, my health deteriorated because of the, the long 70, 80 hour working, consistent working hours. Uh, and one day I literally just collapsed on the top of the stairway and just rolled down and found myself in, in the hospital. And that's where I realized, oh, okay, you can work so hard, uh, almost not have a life. At the same time, I wasn't really enjoying myself anymore. It's, it's all, it was just about yeah, going hard, working hard and then making money, but then not really knowing what to do with it. So like you, however you were on, on the business front, I was on the, on the corporate front. And one thing that it was really, um, for you, I know you, uh, you said that, life changed when you, when you, you said you, you lost that a considerable amount of money. For me, life changed when I felt I, I rolled down their set of flights, flights of stairs and found myself in the hospital. And I realized I couldn't do this going forward. And what was it that I, I really wanted to do, which was really taking that capital I saved up in, at the NAB job and reinvesting that now. Um, and what I want to say that, you know, I was, I went out there and, and, and I did very well from day one. Uh, it wasn't, it was a disaster for two years. I, I ended up just going out there, I think listening to the wrong people, learning from the wrong people. And I actually blew a six figure account just like you as well. So all my NAB savings went. So you are not the <laughs> only one. I'm the other person. Yeah, on the other yeah. side. I must be, I must, I'm on target then. I've got, I've lost the cash bit. I've done that. I'm on target. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I did it over an 18 month period. So I lost uh, well over six figures. And uh, then I realized, crap, I, I actually have no idea what I'm doing, even though I'm a good at my job, but I have no idea how to invest in, and, 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 and trade properly. So I went in search for, my journey was going in search for, you know, the fund managers, uh, the people who, who would do it for a living. And um, I was lucky enough to, I, I wrote to uh, my hero, Warren Buffett at the time. And I was, uh, apparently I was the first one down under to, to write to him. And, and uh, I got a response from him. And then that really uh, provided me that uh, realizing that, oh, wow, such an incredible investor would, would come back to me. And I was, it was really just a thank you letter. Uh, and that ended up opening up a lot of doors where I, I'd, I'd be able to uh, go to coffees, have lunches with great fund managers in our country mm -hmm. and even learn from, from ones overseas as well. And that became, uh, that's where I learned my skill, my craft. So it wasn't no longer from the people who, you know, you, you, you pay these, um, like you said, there's a, a, a dime a dozen with all these speakers and stuff out there. And they, I trusted them. And in actual fact, these guys never really did it for a living. They, they taught for a living. So that's how they made their money. Mm -hmm. um, and until I, I realized I, I then learned from the right people the guys who did it for a living day in, day out, managing other people's money. That's why the risk management factor that you've probably learned today is really a, a combination of all that, all that learning because 
it's one thing to learn from someone who has no idea they teach for a living, but they're, all they're thinking about is the profit. But on our end, as a, you know, as a fund manager, your focus is actually not on the making money side, it's on the protection side. And it's all about risk management and, the, and letting the profits take care of itself. So that's me, my, my, my journey in a sort of a nutshell. It's such a fascinating journey. It's why I'm such a fan, Tara. I don't remember if you remember when I was first chatting to you and I asked you a question. Um, and if anyone's ever listening and you're asking financial advice from someone, the question I always like to ask is, tell me what's your net worth? Mm. And I asked Terry, I said, Terry, what are you worth? And the reason yeah. I did that is, is this guy just talking and, and just, you know, just teaching or is he actually doing it himself? And so I was, you know, you know, I was very, you know, pleasantly uh, surprised, I guess, if I sort of found out his net worth. I go, great, the only way you're doing that is, is success in the market yourself, real time doing it. So it's a real deal. So, so Terry, just um, um, when we talk about, if we look at investing overall, so, you know, not just, just shares, I guess, but if you look overall mm. and people go and say, I want to start doing some investing, where do you feel, um, you know, where do they feel that they go wrong? You know, you talked about at the start, I think the first point, of course, is having a desire. Like you talked about you had the desire not to go through it. Your mum had been through and yeah. I have a similar desire. My desire is to live, uh, to live a life of, of sort of, uh, on my terms, which just means I get to do what I want to do when I want to do. And my thing is to help myself and others. Yes. So I think it always starts with the desire. So let's assume that someone has the desire as a start point, because if they don't have the desire, chances are they're certainly not going to bother listening mm. to this, this interview. So let's assume they've got desire. Yep. Where do you feel they go wrong in their investing journey, sort of starting out and as they get going a bit? I think that the number one is, uh, I think potentially even both you and I have actually committed that crime of uh, taking far too much risk where we either leverage up something like the, you know, when you hear of people like they've just started and literally they've just gone straight to options, CFDs, Forex futures, all these leverage type derivatives or products out there, which one, they have no idea about the risk they're taking. And it's because of the, the thought of that, of the return. In other words, they think about the upside rather than the downside. So that's probably risk uh, or the mistake. Number one. Uh, the other one is I think, listening on say when I talk to a family or friend and then they, they see them either succeeding or they hear about them saying, Oh, go and buy such and such of a stock. So they take on tips from family and friends over a barbecue, for example, and they just go, Oh, here's the real deal. Oh yes. It's a, it's a great opportunity. And, and then they, they literally plonk down a, a bunch of capital having no idea where they've probably even done more research on their holiday compared to even what they've just done for an investment, you know, worth potentially tens of thousands of dollars. So that's another one uh, taking on board risk and yep. I think the other one too is maybe uh, not getting the right education where they just yeah. go out there and just think that because they're, they're good at their business, they're good at what they do for a living. They're smart mm -hmm. enough to go out there and then just invest very successfully from day one. So they're not even getting the right education. So I think that, Oh, because I'm, I don't know, a dentist, a surgeon, I must have the IQ level of, you know, of, of finance as well. So you just go out there and just do it without learning. So I think that's the three main, yeah, yeah the three main things. And it's fascinating. I'm laughing because I've made all those mistakes, um, <laughs> all of them. And, and I really, so, and I think when you go through it with the benefit of hindsight, I've sort of distilled it down and gone, what do I reckon where people go wrong? And I go, number one, they don't, if they don't have the desire or the intention, sure. nothing's going to happen. Yep. So, you know, I really want to go ahead, but I'm not prepared to go and do a course or I'm not prepared to go and speak to successful people or whatever. Number two, I actually believe is a certain amount of worthiness. So a lot of people actually go, I don't believe I'm worth it. I'm not smart enough. I'm not clever enough. I don't deserve it. And so that will stop the desire straight away. And there's a process to removing that. I think the third area is they don't have the knowledge, as you talked about, and that was me. I didn't have the knowledge or the process on, okay, I got some money, but how do I actually make that thing work? Mm. And um, number four, don't have a plan. It's mm. just, it, it's almost punting. It's just haphazard. And I think the number, the, the fifth one is really, and I've learned this a lot from you as well, is the discipline, do the work. Mm. Um, in, investing is a skill set to learn. And I've found the more you do it, the more comfortable you, it's like your brain starts reading into things a lot faster, but just because of that repetition of doing the work. Yeah. Um, and, and, and one other thing, Terry, do you often hear people saying, I wish I'd started earlier? Like, is that one of the key people just think oh. they have to be wealthy before they can start investing? Yeah, many times. A lot of people, especially uh, the ones that have had more, I guess, um, so we, in our blueprint course, we've got quite a, a wider range of ages from our, our youngest uh, was 17 at the time and uh, our oldest was 76. And of course, the, the ones who are much older will, will ask, you know, is it too late for them to start? Uh, because I always say, you know, compounding takes time. So the more time you have, the, the lower the risk you, you need to take 
to make the returns you want down a track because it just compounds and compounds wealth. So, however, having said that, though, the other part that a lot of people, I think they, they get wrong is they, they, they think that they always need to save up this, this lump sum of, of yes. such, such amount before they begin. Mm. So they, they yes. go out there and they save, they save, whether it's 5,000, 10,000 or, or above, they just wait for that magical lump sum, whatever it may be. And mm. for me, I believe that if you've got a right process and system, you can literally start off even as like a savings plan. So rather than just putting the bank, provided you don't need that money for spending, of course, that money can be reinvested right away from day one. Uh, so this month you might see some bad news about a stock. It drops badly. You do some research, search, realize that the stock is a great stock, uh, undervalued. That month you purchase that stock. Then the next month, another opportunity happens. And then there's another stock that has, you know, again, bad news, but a great company that's had just momentarily either bad news or the industry has suffered some bad news. Then that, that, that stock breaks down. Then you buy that stock next month. So is this yeah. savings plan that you just grow and grow? So there's really no such thing as needing to save such and such amount. But of course, if you've got an amount, great, that helps you. But even that, though, saying that too is, uh, uh, if you recall too, Sam, I think yourself, when you, you came uh, way back a year ago, uh, you were wondering, you know, how much should I save and uh, should I start with? And I remember, mm -hmm. if I recall rightly, even if you, no matter what amount you had, I would never say, look, put in uh, the, the amount that you were thinking. Most times I actually yeah. say, look, a fraction that start small yeah. because ultimately one, you're going to, you're only learning, you will make mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily mistakes of the system not working. It's more of mistakes on either, you know, not getting used to the platform, uh, maybe psychologically fearing greed, getting in the way for the time being. So until yep. you experience that and having a smaller portfolio, then it doesn't financially doesn't hurt you, but at the same time, it allows you to get comfortable with a system that knowing that it works on a small scale, and then you can always scale up down a track. And I think that, like, for me, that was a really big learn. You know, they start, they say, you know, there's a philosophy that says fail small, mm. um, which is really go, don't, you know, you've got to stay in the game. And so instead of me thinking I'm going to make all this money, I'm going, no, no, I'm learning a process. Once I've got that process and I've learned the process, which is the knowledge or the strategy, I can then use that for the next 20, 30, 40 years and leverage that out yes. to higher and higher numbers. And, and doing exactly that, I started with a small amount. And as you said, just look at the percentages. Yes. And that's all I looked at that. And then once I got to a place where I stopped thinking and I stopped guessing, it became, okay, it, it was like almost a habit. You'd see certain things happen. You go, right, now it's time to, to buy that particular stock. And that's then when I moved up and as, as you, you know, we know I've sort of moved up to the next level and put some more money in that I'm, and then you get used to that next psychological, a dollar amount and things like that. And you just sort of scale up from there. Yeah. But what I liked was the fact that when you start talking, saying, you know, our stocks dropped and what's the market saying and this and that, when you say that, well, first time I heard you say it, I thought, my gosh, I'd have to be some genius to figure this all out. Like, there must be so much incredible amount of, you know, years and years of research. What's blown me away is because of the, the system and the process is that how quickly you can sit and figure out what is a good stock and what's not a good stock mm. and, and then when to buy and when to sell. Because when using share brokers, and I was using share brokers and I still do, mm. but as I'm getting more confident, I'm pulling more away from them and doing more myself because what I find is if they go, this is a good share, well, I had no way of assessing whether they're right or not. At mm. least now I can assess a share and go yes or no. And the second thing, they'd say to buy, when to buy, when to sell. I had no way of knowing that either. Mm. Whereas now, like I'm advising my guys when to buy and when to sell. And what's funny, they're advising me. They might say, no, hang on to it. And I go, no, sell. And it's dropping down. And it's almost like, I haven't said it yet, Terry, but I'm tempted to say, I told you so. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's fascinating that, okay, so the big, not, the big message you want out there, start early, learn the process. So then when you've actually got some money, you scale up. But the real thing is learn how to walk first. And that's the big Definitely. wealth creation message is start, just start. Yeah. Um, I know when we look at compounding, have you got sort of the dollar figures if you put in, you know, $1,000 and compounded it for, you know, 10, 20 years or something, that figure it's sort of worth, you know, what is it? It's $200,000 or some mm. extraordinary amount of money, just that compounding return of over time. Yep, correct. Cool. So let's talk about, um, um, well, we've sort of talked about what stops people starting and that's mm. really, I don't have enough money or I'm not mm. smart enough or, and I think this is the prudent thing, I actually don't know what actually works. Yep. And that for me has been my journey finding a system that works, which is why I'm kind of sharing this. Yeah. So, so it was interesting, Terry. So you now, uh, so you're running a, a program. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the Blueprint program. But 
Um, you shared with me that you're now the banks. Major banks are getting you to come in and train their team. Yeah. Why is that? Tell me a bit about that. Right. Um, this is by accident, really, because I, I, a friend of mine who runs quite a large insurance operations in Southeast Asia, uh, Singapore primarily, and he, I've been a friend with him for a long time. And uh, we met at uh, a Tony Robbins event years ago for mindset purposes uh, and became good friends. And then realizing and that obviously he's got a significant amount of wealth and he wanted to me to teach him how to do it for him. For him. But at the same time, he had a, he's got a, a team of about 200 people, 200 staff. So he wanted me to now start teaching his staff so they can become wealthy. So he's one of those guys that just does, doesn't want to be wealthy himself, but he wants his staff and his team to also be wealthy. So he wanted me to fly over there to Singapore and start teaching his staff. And because of the, I guess, the relationship and the size of accounts he's got with brokers, the, uh, the, the broker allowed us to utilize one of their, um, one of their rooms, their, their auditorium, which was excellent because there was no cost to us. We just went in there, that would set everything up and, and we just teach uh, his group. But while I was teaching, uh, unknown to me though, was that the brokers actually had a couple of their staff inside the, the actual presentation when I was just teaching. And it was until the end that they came up and just tapped me on the shoulder where they, they said, oh, uh, when they heard about me, they, I thought I was just another typical guy out there spruiking a product basically. And they, had, they really was just going to sit there, make sure I did the right thing because I was using their, their, their auditorium and, uh, and then they'll leave. Yeah. But they were fascinated. They stayed for the whole thing. And, and literally, I thought they were just the, the staff of my friend, but they weren't. And then they asked me, oh, could I help them? And then at the same time, maybe uh, introduce, they'll introduce their, their staff um, and, or their client, their client base. And uh, I teach them because what they found was a lot of their client base would, uh, would pretty much lose a bunch of money and they would leave them within six months. Mm. Uh, and yeah. uh, a lot of them, they were either, uh, the, not only just stockbrokers, but also CFD brokers as well. So they, they were playing with uh, leverage. Mm-hmm. And my job that they wanted me to do was really go there and teach their, their, their client base, not necessarily not to make money, but how to actually not lose money and blow their accounts within six months. Because that's what 90% of their accounts actually were blown up in six months. That's, that's a sad fact. Wow. So they, so they wow. spent millions of dollars on promotion marketing and yes. within six months that client will be gone. And then they have to churn and find new clients, spend more money on marketing. And that's why uh, I, I ended up being on there. And then I went onto another, onto another stage, spoke, that one broker then brought another three, I think it was another three more banks. It, they, they were friends. They brought three more banks in there. I, again, I had no idea their friends were there with uh, the major banks of Asia. Uh, and then mm-hmm. they, once I finished, got off, and then it, it, it sort of blew their mind. And then they came up and, t- and asked me to also teach the other banks, uh, the other uh, three more banks, their client base as well. Yeah, yeah so that, that was all by accident, really. It wasn't planned. It was just, they were just in, in the room. But it's fascinating. When you get someone who's the real deal, as in, they walk what they talk, they've got the results, and they're not, it's not a sales process. It's just, mm. I'm here to add value if you like it, great. Yep. Um, that, that's when I tend to find it's not, it's not, you're not selling anything, you're just, you're adding value, you're giving someone a gift. And mm. that's very much, you know, I guess why I'm interviewing you is that, uh, is that I think what you do is, well, just, it's the results speak for themselves. I know you've got a bunch of farmers, yep. and I look, I come off a farming background myself. My, we've yep. got 36,000 acres in the middle of Queensland, a sheep and cattle station. Mm. And, you know, for them, the farmers, you know, to think that they're now successfully investing and, and you know, come rain, you know, drought or whatever, they've now got a process that they can actually get away from requiring their business in the long, after, in the long term. You know, the long term, they're actually, they've got security outside of that, which I'm such a fan of. Mm. So, um, I'm interested. Along your way, um, mm-hmm. uh, we I, I, we all get these what I call um, I call them uh, gifts, um, but normally they're wrapped in a pile of pain. Right. And so generally, you get big and often uh, setbacks. And I've I've had two big setbacks. I'd say number one was a sheet metal factory that we bought yep. and uh, put us into uh, put us basically into put myself in a depression and I didn't want to deal with anything and we thought we'd lost everything. And, but it was that what I learned through that and who I went to for help became my kind of saviors. And that put me on this whole journey of, you know, living the life we do now. So it was that one sort of helped me in the personal development, the business side. Hmm. And it's interesting. It was losing that six figure sum of money um, was uh, that sort of pushed me to then go, I need to learn the science of wealth creation. Stop bloody punting with the money you've learned make this safe, make it long-term, know what you're doing. Mm. And that was the second gift that I look at. And, and you know, they're, they're painful. I'd rather not have, I'd rather have that six, that, that six figure sum in my bank now, but 
I know down the in the future that sum of money would will become minuscule compared to the gift that it delivers. So I'm interesting what you'd say. Uh, you mentioned one of yours was your you know you lost some coin. Any other financial setbacks you've had along the way that sort of ended up being big gifts for you? Um, yeah, the other thing probably I would say was uh, on, on one hand uh, I did lose the you know the, the bunch. On, on the on the multiple you know CFDs and options and forex, so that was one thing. And then on the other, I think I didn't learn enough that I part of the even though once I I, I got going, I ended up um, putting too large, of, although no longer leveraged, I started still putting uh, believing that yep I would be smart enough to put a larger amount of money into that that one even though it's not unleveraged that one or two investments. And in other words, it was too big of a position for the actual portfolio. So when yeah. things ended up going wrong then they go wrong in a big way. Um, and right. in, in the old days, when, when a stock that I chose didn't go right, it really dramatically affected the portfolio. So therefore, yeah. then I, that was another gift that I, I needed to learn that no matter how, how much research I do, I'm, I gotta admit that I'm not the smartest person in the room. Something may go wrong and always have a, a, a what I call position sizing or diversified portfolio. So no matter what happens to any one pick that we make, it's okay mm. because it only represents a very tiny portion of the portfolio. So now, for example, mm. and our records are uh, it's well over 80, uh, 90, basically 80, no, I think it was 89% of our investment mm. calls are right. So knowing that mm. 11 out of the 100, every time, every 100 investments that go out, 89 will be right, 11 will be wrong mm. and be okay with mm. the 11 and ensuring that the 11 don't kill me. That's the main thing. And that's the same as any other our students where, a lot of them I know they're getting 80 to 95% right. And it's very yep. important that they don't have any one of those invest, investments too big relative to their portfolio and also hurts them as well. So my gift of getting that learnt in a heart, and I guess it was painful, like you said, but it, it became, mm. it made me the, uh, the, the investor and trader that I am today. Yeah. And I know Terry, like when you said those initially, when I was talking to you and you were saying, Oh, people get our students, you know, after 12 months of getting 80, 90% of their calls right, honestly, mate, I was like, <laughs> mate, you're, you're talking a good story or I'm not buying it. Uh, my stats are I'm at 96% uh, so oh, really? far over the 12 months. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I, bet, I thought I'd better actually measure this because I'm 96. Humble, All right, humble mate. pie here. Sam, um, yeah, you've got to do me a favor now. You've got to put it on Facebook and, and inspire the rest. 96 is very high. Yeah. That's really impressive. Um, and what's amazed me is that it's taught when things go south, uh, and we've got a couple, like we're holding that, you know, they're, they're down 30%. That's mm. fine. Yeah. You just know that you go, they're, they're good companies, they're down for reasons, and you go, I know long term they'll be right. But yeah. it's such a small part of the portfolio, it's kind of irrelevant. Correct. And uh, it's it's a nice place, whereas I've got other times where, yeah, I've been down, you know, literally my entire portfolio has gone down by 60% and stayed there and actually gone and disappeared. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah, so, and what it's, I'm, if you're listening in, what I'm saying is that, uh, there's everything has a purpose and there's a gift in everything, mm. uh, particularly if you've got that perspective, prepared to look at it, but mm. uh, I could have gone, investing's dangerous, this is stupid, I'm going to lose all my money. But I chose to go, no, no, well, well, Sam, what's the gift here? The gift is you need to go find someone and get really good investing. So I made a clear decision that day. Mm. Actually, when I rang you, Terry, I went, I'm going to become a great investor. And I remember you telling me, you said, Sam, Two years and you are going to be a very confident investor. And I think your comment was within two odd years, if you're disciplined and you're doing this on, you know, as suggested, mm. you won't need a financial advisor. Mm. Um, and I would say I'm very much on track. I'm already pulling money out of other accounts. I'm telling my advisors when to buy, when to sell. Yeah. Um, and so that, you know, is all already sort of playing out. Yeah. So, um, that's awesome. Uh, so, um, so we're going to we, we're going to do a um, we, we we're going to run a webinar in a in a, in a couple of weeks and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I remember the first webinar I listened to of yours. It was a few years ago, and I've got to be really honest. I did nothing from it, right? Um, until of course I'd had the slap between the eyeballs, and then suddenly I, I yeah I remember that I missed that guy a few years ago, and then that was you know right great I'm on board and and it's interesting. I think if I had have done if I had have taken this program back then. I can tell you I would be probably a quarter of a million dollars better off right now mm. um, in, in, in those sort of shares. Yeah. So what to give everyone a little bit of a sneak peek what we're going to cover in that actual, in that webinar, mate? Yeah. I mean, uh, primarily my main thing is I, 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 when in that 90 minutes, it's, it's full-blown teaching. Uh, so my, my focus has always been teaching first and ensuring that 
you know, whether uh, Blueprint is right for you, I have no idea. But the main thing is that if you do put the effort in and, and, and take action of what we learn on the webinar, uh, you'll, it definitely will make a change in, in their lives. So the thing that we do cover is, I, I call it the three Ps of, in, of investing or trading. So what are they? Uh, the first P is always about protection. So it's, all, it's how do you protect yourself 24 seven while you create the portfolio you want. So it's all about you know downside first, protecting the downside, and I always say that the upside is a byproduct of the of the downside of pr proper risk management and protecting the downside. So that's and that, and that that was uh, that was Warren Buffett's big takeaway rule number one: don't lose money. Rule number two: refer to rule number one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so I took that to heart, and that's why uh, because I've also managed people's money. It's been always my focus of, of point of call where um, I'm not going to firstly in that one week, not the next, actually the first three weeks, I don't teach you how to make money. I teach you how to protect right. yourself first and how to think mm. because a lot of people just want, want that system. They want to start getting there and start making money. Mm. But the truth is, even if I give you, if we put the, 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 the profit first, uh, which is the third P, uh, and I gave you the, the right system, but if you don't have the right mindset, you don't have the right protection, you'll blow up anyway. Yeah. So there's no point yeah. in me teaching you how to make money because you won't get there. So that's uh, you know week one, um, uh, the, the first P, which is all, all about the protection side. Then on week two, that's when we now look at the, the uh, I call it prevision. In other words, seeing the big picture. You know, where is the world at? And a lot of people yeah. get caught up in the world headlines. So every single day, mm -hmm. when you turn yeah. on the news, you will see President Trump doing something silly on, the, on a tweet or something, <laughs> right? Drives the markets down or whatever. And somehow, yeah. it's funny how journalists need to find, you know, it's their job, but they need to find a, mm -hmm. a reason why the markets dropped but we've seen that a week prior to that, that the market's now overvalued. It's gone up where it needs to go up. It's things are expensive. Yeah. It's now to go contrarian. Uh, don't, don't be too optimistic because the world hasn't fixed itself up, but yet all the shares are now up time to lock in your profits and move on and let, and when the, the bad news will eventually hit, that's when we'll go for another run and make our profit again. So it's knowing exactly yeah. where the market is. And then if you know that you never need to turn on the, on the TV ever again to, to listen no. where the headlines are. In actual fact, you, you, the only reason why you look, you listen to the headlines is for one reason, to know how the psychology of the market is thinking. So if they're optimistic, yeah. we, we are pessimistic. If they're pessimistic, we're optimistic. So that's yeah. a, a totally opposite change of uh, mindset from that point of view. Yeah, and then yeah. The, uh, the final P, uh, which is the profit side. Finally, we teach you how to, you know, how to choose the right stocks from a very simple uh, number of tools where you can just easily filter out the best and let go of all the mm -hmm. rubbish out there. Mm. And I, I'm just I'm such a fan of like I'm a lazy, lazy git, Terry. Mm. So like if I can uh, if I can to be able to find a system that I don't have to go through and meticulously trawl through, you know, reams and reams of paper to find something out about a stock. The mm. fact that I can do it so quickly and get the yes, it's in, no, it's out, and then go and dig in and do a bit more research. It's it's such a cool thing that I know that when I get the hot stock at the barbecue. I can go home, pop it in the system and within about three seconds flat, I can go, crikey, that's a shocker. How could they even be talking about that? Yes. Whereas previously, mate, I would have gone, oh, maybe I should get in on this. And maybe I might miss out. I might miss out. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. um, so, so you, you'll be talking in the, in the webinar, essentially you'll be talking to those three areas of fees yes. and sort of giving some people some advice and tools and strategies on how they can, uh, what's available and how they can actually use them. Yeah, 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 and and, and we'll very we'll, we'll be focused very particular on on the stock section because I know a lot of people want to know you know potentially they they already hold a portfolio worth of stocks so by the end of sure. it they'll know whether even if, if they're not if they've not even invested before they'll easily mm. be able to check out their current stocks or their current portfolio and know whether it's even worthwhile holding onto it or not or maybe potentially getting rid of it and then starting fresh again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and so Tara, I just want to close on one sort of last question if it's okay yeah. sure um i remember hearing an article uh, or reading an article where um the guy in from the pursuit of happiness and mm. he the, the guy will smith portrayed him and they, they basically they're talking about the, the guy who was actually the, the real life dude and said you know mm. what advice would you give to his younger self mm. i remember reading it it was just a cracking kind of a it was a cracking kind of a, a perspective that only you can get when you're older looking back and saying the younger self. So what advice would you give to your younger self in the area of, of, of wealth generation or, and investing? If you had three things, three okay. things you could do, what are three bits of advice would you give? I'll go, the, the first one I would say is patience, patience grasshopper, because as a young self, uh, I'm one of those that just want like 
give it to me and then go, go, go. So I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. extremely speedy. I even talk fast. I walk fast. Everything's about, about me is actually fast. So, <laughs> so one thing, the market is not like that. Don't be in a hurry and just take the time you need to, uh, one, one thing, firstly, learn the, learn the thing, learn it, and then yeah. consistency of action. Because it's great to learn one thing, but if you do nothing with it, uh, nothing happens. And actually, it's, it's probably what you said earlier. I mean, you, you saw me years ago, but didn't do anything out of it, right? And then until you realize, uh, you know, mistakes were making, made, and then you realize, oh, I need to go back to it now. So it's all about uh, that patience of allowing time to do its thing. And the market mm. is, one, is something like that, where not all the time you'll find, you'll find opportunities, but when there is, you take it. And mm. then once you've taken it, you, can, you need to allow the time for the market mm. to do its thing and allow that stock to, to, to go up if, you need, you know, if it needs to go up. So that's, yeah. that's that, patience. Next one is, I, I think it's a, I would say, um, again, going back to the education side, definitely learn from the right people. Uh, there, are, yes. there are a myriad of so-called seminars, conferences out there. And it's a great question that you asked me, you know, what was my net worth? You were very open, just went out there. And, um, you know, if you, one of the easiest questions is to, to look at their, their pedigree or their background. You know, what is it that they've done? Have they ever managed money? If you're learning from yes. someone who has, in actual fact, has never managed money, there may be a problem because they've only managed either a small amount or in actual fact, they may be just uh, learning a system from someone who's already done it and then just rehashing yeah. it and making it their own. And it's teaching it yeah. without actually having any success. So you need to find out what their background really is. Have they made money with their own system? And have they even managed money? Because managing money then allows, them to, allows you to know that you're now learning from someone who is very risk adverse because when you manage money, it's, it's very different. Your, your mm. psychology shifts from making money to protection straight away. And that's how I learned my craft from the protection side. And I think on that bit, Terry is, is um, making money off your own system, but also over an extended period of time, because yeah. I think there's flash in the pans and people to, you know, see fund manage they're good this year, then they're sort of gone, you know, they're, yeah. the, they're the, the, the sort of flash source at the moment, but yeah. you've had like your results have been over 20% and that's over a sort of 15, 15. year time frame, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a 20, yeah. just over 22 uh, and over a 15 year period. So, uh, and, and, and it's, when I say that it's not some years, uh, it's not every year I get 22, of course. It's some years I make five in post GFC. During the GFC, I, I, was, I was negative. So it was minus five, mm. minus six. They happened. And then post GFC, mm. there were 30 plus, 38, 40% years as well. However, mm. going back in time, then the, it's all about the compounding side. So yeah, compounding is just mm. over 20. Uh, so yes, consistency is definitely key. And mm. I'd probably say the, the, last, the last thing I'd, I'd probably say to my younger self was, is to forever stay a student. So you're always yeah. learning no matter what you, yeah. you never, you are never going to be, you, you'll never know, think that even if you, if you've got it, there's always something more to learn. So just be open to the fact that you don't know everything. And even myself now, I'm still learning you know, from our students as well. So certain things come to mm -hmm. me and it's like, Oh, I remember that years ago, but I never went back to it. So maybe, maybe mm -hmm. now I'll go back mm -hmm. to it as well. So I'm forever, I'm always learning as well. And, and I think just staying humble, no matter how successful you are, stay humble, mm -hmm. grounded, and, mm. and you know pay it forward and give back yeah and you know what you know what excites me more than you being able to get 20 percent a year i mean everyone go yeah that's fine you're the guru what i couldn't believe i didn't believe you initially till i rang and and researched your people who are using your process is that right. after a year and two they're getting between 10 and 20 percent return each year as well yeah and some higher like there's someone yes. who has just had a 30 percent year and it's mm. and i was like oh, great i'll believe it when i see it or more i'll believe it when i experience it now that i've experienced myself that's what i'm the fan of so mm. you know finding those teachers as you say that a hey, are they the real deal mm. uh, which means they've done it themselves and they're showing you how they're doing it uh, mm. how they've done it yeah, yeah. Mate, that's fantastic. I think that's a, a good insight, not just for investing in shares, but that's cross contextual. I mean, if you're in real estate or if you're in, you know, investing in businesses, it's going to be the same things, isn't it? It's, it, it's going to be the same yeah. basic philosophies. Uh, definitely. Exactly the same. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing, funny thing is, Sam, if you asked me a year ago, because uh, at that time I actually never really interviewed our, our students, but then after you uh, asked that, I realized, ah, oh, I think it's time since I've already, I've, I've been teaching about two, now it's, it's going towards four years, but now with the 600 plus students we've got, we've got a, a ton of success stories. So then I yeah, post, I think it was four months later. Yeah, actually four months later after you asked me that, I decided I want to go around the country and bring a, a, a camera crew 
and I wasn't involved. I, just, I would go there just to have them feel comfortable. And I'd let the camera crew and the, the, my, my, my man, Chris, and he'd interview them and have it all, all on camera. So we ended up doing 30 plus interviews in a, in a period of uh, three weeks. So yeah, wow. real people around Australia, all walks of life from farmers to electricians to builders, anything really. Uh, and I was, I allowed them to, I have no idea what they said, allow them just to be interviewed. And, um, and then, then that's how I found out their, their, their results from those interviews. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, I, I know people can listen into those interviews. Is that, is there, is that on your website? That yeah, they it's on the website. So under, in one of the tabs called testimonials and we've been able to so far load, I think 20, just over 20 of them. So they're already there. Yeah, right. And there's another, uh, another bundle that's uh, well over 10 that's going to come on, on board and they, within the next two weeks. Yeah. So that's on, what's the website? It's freedom. Uh, www.thefreedomtrader.com. So T H E freedom trader.com and forward yep. slash uh, testimonials. Yeah. No, yeah, cool. All right. Well, Terry, mate, appreciate your time. Uh, you know, I always enjoy chatting. You're just a nice, as you say, you're a humble bloke. You're doing great. But what I love is, and I feel like I'm doing that same thing. He's just passing it forward. And really it's not me doing any teaching. It's just, I've stumbled across this guy. I've been testing it for a year because I'll never recommend anything unless I've personally used it, got results myself, then I'm happy to share it with someone else in, yeah. you know, in the business science or anywhere we teach. So that's what I'm doing. Um, if uh, you're listening, you want to join in my, my suggestion is join in and have a listen. We'll be, we'll send out an email about a webinar we're going to do. Yep. And uh, then we'll get more into the, the nuts and bolts. And, and that's where people go, oh, how do I know which stock and stuff? So you'll learn a lot. It'll be yep. fascinating. And uh, look forward to sort of helping, helping others on their journey of, uh, of, of wealth science and that cre help, you know, facilitating, creating extraordinary life. Yep. Well, thanks, Terry. All the best, mate. We'll uh, chat in a couple of weeks. No worries. Thanks, Sam. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.